We explain the liberal phase of the French Revolution under the Legislative Assembly. The hope of a peaceful coexistence between the Assembly and the monarchy was short-lived. The 1791 Constitution would turn out not to be the Magna Carta of France, because it lacked the endorsement of the King. In fact, shortly after the Declaration of the Rights of Man was issued, Louis XVI made moves to show his distaste for the actions of the Assembly. He dismissed Jacques Necker for his proposed reforms, and even though he knew there was real pain, hunger, and suffering in France, he continued to throw lavish parties at Versailles. Eventually, 6,000 women marched on Versailles with pitchforks, demanding he return to Paris to live with those who were suffering. Much of the anger of the marchers was put on Marie Antoinette, the queen who'd come to them from Austria. They thought she was the one who demanded Louis throw lavish parties and spend money believing an unproven story that she had said let them eat cake when they were hungry for bread. In reality, she gave lots of her time and money to relief of the poor and encouraged Louis to compromise with the assembly. Louis and the royal family agreed to return to Paris under a National Guard escort of Lafayette and his men. They were surrounded by the women who rode on the cannons into Paris and celebrated. Louis wore the tricolor. However, after the Constitution abolished the nobility and the church, Louis knew it was time to run. In June 1791, the royal family fled for the border in disguise, trying to make it to Austria. They were caught at Varennes. They were marched back to Paris by soldiers and mocked by the citizens. The Jacobins and others seized the opportunity to show how a king could not be trusted and the monarchy must be abolished. The Constitution of 1791 would be signed with Louis' support, but the damage was already done. The moderates had lost the argument, and the radical phase was beginning. But there were many groups who weren't pleased with the Constitution. We've already discussed women's rights champions like Olympe de Gouges, who was upset the women were left out. Peasants were not pleased with how the writers had treated the church. The center was not holding. And to add to the tension, the revolutionary currency, the Austin yacht, had dropped in value to worthless. There were food shortages, prices had increased, and wages had gotten stagnant. There was a group of working-class people called the sans culottes because they wore pants and not traditional knee breeches, who demanded a living wage and a republic. With the new constitution, the National Assembly became the Legislative Assembly. The moderates, like Lafayette and their beliefs in preserving a king, fell from favor. The Jacobins and their kingless republic, led by Jean Roland, Jacques Brousseau, Robespierre, Danton, and radical newspaper writers like Marat, took power over the assembly and over the Paris Commune. The more radical among them had been responsible for violent confrontations like the Cham de Mar massacre. And now that they were in charge, what would they do with that power? 